Okay, the message from Emmett Fox. Uh, the title is, Let God Have Your Burden. And he writes, once you have contract, contacted the power within, capital P, and have allowed it to take over your responsibilities for you, it will direct and govern all your affairs from the greatest to the least without mistakes. And then in uh, italics, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And so we, we want to be very clear here that we're talking not political or state government, we're talking about government of your life. You are tired and driven and worried and weak and ill and depressed because you have been trying to carry the government upon your own soul, shoulder. The burden is too much for you and you have broken down under it. Now, immediately you hand over your self-government. That is the burden of making a living or of healing your body or erasing your mistakes to the child with a capital C. He, the tireless one, the all powerful, the all wise, the all resourceful, assumes it with joy and your difficulties have seen the beginning of the end. And then the quote he has, I'm gonna use the Lamsa Bible rather than the King James. is cast your worries upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to fear want. Now, I hadn't, when working on the talk today, looked at what Emmett Fox said, but it fits so perfectly as so often happens. The title is Words from the Dead for 2021. And it isn't totally from the dead, but if you think about what 2020 has been or has been like, it has been so many crises. We're not, uh, we're talking, of course, lots of deaths, just normal deaths, COVID deaths, but trans transition deaths. But that's not the only kind of death, and it's not the kind I'm emphasizing today. Every time we face change, when we make change, when change comes upon us, we are, in fact, facing a death, a death of what we have or have had And from there, we must make renewal. Um, I think of it as little deaths, even though some of them are pretty major. Uh, there have been studies that have shown that show, for instance, that next to having a relative, a parent die, the most life-shaking, illness-causing or wellness disrupting events are things like job loss, like moving, like getting married. They are just as up there in terms of the probability of major health disruption. And if you think back through 2020, there have been so many disruptions, changes, not only in our individual lives, but in the, the, shall we say, the life of this country, the life of this world. Whether you're talking cyclones, hurricanes, beyond anything anyone has ever seen, whether you're talking various kinds of political violence or personal violence. So what do we need to prepare ourselves for? Uh, you know, we can talk about change and I will be talking about addressing change and what, um, some people who passed on have said about it. But I thought it might be useful to see what some psychics are saying. Um, the Guardian recently had an article where they interviewed several different people who do various kinds of prognostication to see what they said. And these are people that have fairly good reputations. Um, in one case, uh, she won the award as, of the, as the best psychic in uh, in Europe, sort of like a Eurovision for psychics. Uh, 
she came out ahead of 70,000 other contestants. Um, and so I'm just going to hit some of the high points of what they said each. Um, June Field, who's a clairvoyant, clairaudience, says the, ne uh, the next 12 months are a stepping stone to something better. We've done a lot of transitioning and 2021 is a time for re-educating and adjusting to a new reality. It is a year of healing and rebuilding. People will continue to be afraid and the return to normality will run into 2022. There will be more polarity, she says, geographically, ideologically, and financially. She says, you don't need to be a psychic to see the anger over how this has been handled. Political systems will be taken down and then we will need to rebuild. We are reaching a point where nearly everyone will know someone or be connected to someone who will have passed from all that's happening. Jane Wallace, who reads Through Crystals, uh, says regarding 2021, these first months are going to be stressful in terms of mental health. Make sure you have people around you who love you and whom you love. Uh, the economy is coming uh, to a divide. One side feels intense and will become successful. They will innovate, adapt, and grow. The other side will decline. Mindset will be important. People must be focused. And then she closes by saying, autumn is a time where we will start to adapt. And I think as I link into the final quarter of the year, I'm getting clarity, clear quartz, light pastel stones, a time that will feel much lighter. Dale Spencer Weeks does psychic numerology. These are all, I believe, British in origin from references they make. He says, I like in 2021 to that chip taking off, a rocket ship. Uh, the energy is mercurial, like pumping a thousand volts through a hundred volt wires. It's going to be a huge year of change. The world is going through a period of transformation and the vibe of 2021 is about expression and looking for freedom. People will speak out in large groups and old norms will continue to come crashing down. But this huge political and social electricity will also mean violence. The other side of this vibe is chaos. People will speak out in large groups and old norms will continue to crash down. The changes won't work in everyone's favor. Ask yourself, how can I adapt to what's out there? So notice that we're seeing a lot of emphasis on addressing adapting and being ready for it. Uh, Demian Allen, who does Western astrology uh, and he published a book in 2012 where he predicted illness and political turmoil in 2020. So, you know, that would seem to bode well for what he says. He says, this is a transformative time and it will be under Pluto until 2024, 2025. Do not hang on to old ways. He says, we will see the heavy dose of capitalism and materialism change Social equality will be a mantra for the next 20 years. Tatiana Morales, who does tarot and Akashic records, says, do not bring the burdens of 2020 into 2021. It points to working smarter, not harder, to thinking more creatively and intellectually, not emotionally. Radical truths will be revealed in society, the kind that rock the boat. There'll be an energy of busyness, of research, of strategy in 2021. If you are inspired to take up new studies, hobbies, or find new income streams, take action. So you can see there's gonna be all sorts of change, no matter who, which of these people are saying these. And others I've talked with just in passing are all saying, this is a time of change. Some people are saying we're moving to 5D from 3D. Yeah, that's possible. It's not, you know, I don't seek to know that sort of thing or understand it. But we as followers of truth, of, as seekers follow, seeking to follow the spiritual path and do the best we can here, need 
to have the right mindset. It's deciding how to deal not only with the little deaths we've been through, as well as the big deaths and the, uh, the transitions in 2020, but we need to have the mindset ready to address that which is to come in 2021. So I want to move from what is being projected to how are we going to do, what are we going to do about this? And I've um, accumulated writings from three wise people, uh, two of whom have already transited. The third is still here, though people expected them to be dead several years ago and God's kept them here. Um, so each of these, you know, take it not as each is a totality by itself. Each of these will feel, fill a part of what you should have be thinking about as we are walking through 2021. Uh, Emmett Fox uh, talks about facing a problem. Uh, what we call, what we're talking about is little deaths. And this was a, a reporter talking based on conversations with Fox. Excuse me, with Fox. Practicing silence in healing sessions was very important to Emmett Fox. This allowed the presence with a capital P, the opportunity to work in the souls of those who listened, and it melts down individual differences. Fox always included a healing silence before his meetings. He suggested that people enter in silence, sit down and be quiet. The instruction was get your breath, both physically and mentally. Then think of God in any way you like. Recall a favorite text or a verse of a hymn that has helped you then drop your problem, which I'll call here the little death, into the silence and then forget it by thinking again of God. Father Richard Rohr, whom I've quoted many times and whom I respect, Franciscan priest uh, on the, dare we say, the, the more liberal end, the more metaphysical or meta, uh, meta, yeah, the more metaphysical end of life. Uh, er, in my one of my earlier talks, I talked about his understanding of the cosmic Christ, the Christ light, the Christ message, the being Christ who has visited so many people throughout all the centuries. So th this is what he has to say. The word change normally refers to new beginnings. But the mystery of transformation more often happens not when something new begins, but when something old falls apart. The pain of something old falling apart, chaos, and notice we've had, had chaos mentioned multiple times in talking about last year and this year, invites the soul to listen at a deeper level. So let me say this again. The pain of something old falling apart Chaos, in other words, invites the soul to listen at a deeper level and sometimes forces the soul to go to a new place. Most of us would never go to new places in any other way. The mystics use many words to describe this chaos. Fire, dark night, death, emptiness, abandonment, trial, the evil one. Whatever it is, it does not feel good and it does not feel like God. We will normally do anything to keep the old thing from falling apart. Yet this is when we need patience and guidance and the freedom to let go instead of tightening our controls and certitudes. Perhaps Jesus is describing just this phenomenon when he says, quote, it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to a life, to life, and only a few find it. 
not accidentally, he mentions this narrow road right after teaching the golden rule. He knows how much letting go it takes to treat others as you would like them to treat you. While change can force a transformation, spiritual transformation always includes a disconcerting reorientation. And from what I know of those of us here, I think every one of us has experienced one spiritual reorientation that was definitely disorienting and, and or dislocating. It can either help people to find new meaning or it can force people to close down and slowly become more bitter. Now, how's that for a dichotomy? You can find new meaning or you can hang on to the old and become more bitter. And how many people like that have we been seeing lately where bitterness and anger is their mantra? Let it not happen to any of us but we have to be the ones making that choice. The difference is determined precisely by the quality of our inner life, our practices and our spirituality. Change happens, but transformation is always a process of letting go, living in the confusing shadowy place for a while. Eventually we are spit up new as I spit up on a new and unexpected shore. And from that, you can see why Jonah in the belly of the whale is such an important symbol for Jews and Christians. Then back to another writing from Emmett Fox, change is the law of the universe. Without change, the world would not merely remain a static state, but it would soon become stale and very static, very stagnant. Without change, there would be no progress, for change is the very essence of every betterment. It is quite obvious that to do anything in a new and better way, there must be change. Yet, many people look upon any change that comes into their life with dread and foreboding. And those of you who've done lift with me or any of the other practitioners, you probably ended up at some point changing a decision from I want things to say they are, are to I welcome positive change in my life. So many people are terrified of change and it handicaps their ability to get all the good out of life that's there. For those on the spiritual path, Emma Fox continues, for those who believe in God and the power of prayer, change is an invitation to the fuller expression of life. It means that a new door has opened and you are ready to take a step forward. So, addressing change, allowing yourself to deal and accept that it is uncomfortable and shadowy. And then lastly, a, a, a fellow named Elliot Dallin, 31 years old, died of cancer. He was discovered with cancer in, uh, when he was 28 and fought it until he could no longer fight it. There was nothing else left to do. And he wrote about his experience and uh, oh, a couple, three weeks before he died, um, he wrote an essay that I came across and I want to um, cover part of it. He says, and, and uh, you know, this is, if you will, a different take. This is saying, okay, so change is coming, has come, is coming. You're having to let go. But are there some things that you can choose to incorporate in your life that will make the time of transition more comfortable and continue to allow you to bring more good to this earth? To remind you, you know, Phyllis just arrived, um, to remind you that one of the axioms that humanists have taught me is make sure that when you depart, which for them is terminal in all ways, that the earth is a better place for your having passed through. Well, Brian Damien 
assembled this outlook as he was, knew he was only a few weeks from death. And I think it's worth our carrying for all times, whatever be, you know, faces us. So he, he has five different points. First, acknowledge the importance of gratitude. During my worst moments, he writes, the shock of cancer diagnosis, the mental lows and debilitating systems, uh, uh, symptoms of chemotherapy. It was difficult to picture any future moments of joy, of closeness or of love. Even so, at those times, I found, found comfort in remembering what I have, an amazing family, the friends I've made and times I've shared with them, the privilege of the life I have had. His second point, a life, if lived well, is long enough. And then he says, this can mean different things to different people. I've had the good fortune to be able to travel and can confirm that the world is a wonderful place full of moments of awe and of amazement. Soak up as much as you can. It may mean staying active as much as possible. Human body is a wonderful thing. You only appreciate this when it starts to fail you. So when you find yourself slipping into autopilot, catch yourself and take simple pleasure in movement if you can. Look after your body because it's the only one you have and it's bloody brilliant. Knowing that my life was going to be cut short has also changed my perspective on aging. Most people assume they will live to, into old age. I have come to see growing old as a privilege. No one should lament getting one year older, getting another gray hair or wrinkle. Instead, be pleased that you've made it. That if you feel like you haven't made the most of your last year, do your best to make better use of the coming one. Now he's talking about his mortality, his death, but I want you to think in terms even of the little deaths we all face. His third point, it's important to let yourself be vulnerable and to connect with others. He says, we live in a society that prizes capability and independence Two things that cancer often slowly strips away from you. This was naturally a very difficult pill to swallow for me, a healthy, able, late 20 something male. But having to allow myself to be vulnerable and accept help has given me the best two years of my life. And that was pretty inconceivable at the time of diagnosis. What better way is there to spend two years than being surrounded regularly and closely by people you care about and who care about you? His fourth point, do something for others. Against the backdrop of COVID-19, Black Lives Matter and the desperate attempts of migrants to cross the channel, my thoughts really turn to those who have not had my privilege whether that's by virtue of social economics, ethnicity, or the country I was born in. I always try to remind myself of this and look for opportunities to lift others up. His fifth point, protect the planet. I'll be gone soon, but humanity will still be faced with the huge challenge of reducing carbon emissions and saving habitats from destruction. In my time here, I've been lucky enough to see some natural wonders and understand how precious they are. It will take a massive collective effort to protect our planet. So here are five ideas that I suggest are worth your carrying forward in your life during the great times, but especially during the times when you're faced with experiencing another 
little death or big death. Because as he to he's talking here about what the atheist motto is, if you will, leave the world a better place for your having walked through. And I'll also add to that, leave the world a better place, even in faith, in face of the little deaths that we do face and must deal with one way or another. And above all, don't let the little deaths get to you and become bitter. I'm going to close with two thoughts uh, from noted Quakers that are worth meditating on and are directly relevant here. From Marge Abbott, hope can arise from places undreamed of. Hope is the intersection of dreams of ordinary people and the promise of something new that permeates our lives and our traditions. Hope can carry a person through fear past the very real dangers of this world in ways I don't pretend to understand. And then lastly, from Gladys Kungai, oh, how wonderful and faithful God is. Because all things else, when faced with the little deaths, and needing to deal with your life and the little deaths within. Remember, oh, how wonderful and faithful God is. And from there, walk forward in his courage, having placed the problem in his silence and God's silence as Emmett Fox talks about. And then do the best you can each step of the way as you walk from the dying past into, as Richard Rohr says, the shadows and uncertainties of what comes next. Doris, you up for doing the benediction? Yes, I am up okay. for it. Go for it. Okay, uh, Father, Mother, God, thank you for this time we've had together and for Brian's helpful messages. Thank you for letting us all survive 2020 and bless our next week and actually our entire 2021 so that we're able to be of good service in the world, laugh a lot, stay healthy, and um grow in ways we never could have even imagined thank you and amen <laughs>